Suparshada Bhagavat Viraha Janita Vilapa. Lamentation due to separation from the Lord and his devotees. Ye anila premadana karuna pracho Ye anila premadana Karuna Pracho Ena Prabhu Kota Kela Acharya Thako Kaha mora saru prupa Kaha sanatan Kaha da saragu nata patita pavan Kaha mara patta yuga Kaha kavira Eka kale kota gila gora nata Shane koti va mata Annale pashiba Goranga gunera nidhi kota gele pabo Goranga gunera nidhi kota gele Sabha Sange Ra Sange Ye Kolo Vilas Se Sanga Napaya Kande Narutamada Yanila Prema Dana Karuna Pacho Okay. 
Uh, Vrindavan Das Thakur. Yeah, I'm, I'm he usually announces. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He who brought the treasure of divine love and who was filled with compassion and mercy, where has such a personality as Srinivas Acharya gone? Where are my Srup Damodar and Rupa Goswami? Where is Sunatan? Where is Raghunath Das, the savior of the fallen? Where are my Raghunath Bhatta and Gopal Bhatta? And where is Krishna Das Kavaraj? Where did Lord Garanga, the great dancer, suddenly go? I will smash my head against a rock and enter into fire. Where will I find Lord Garanga, the reservoir of all wonderful qualities? Being unable to obtain the association of Lord Garanga, accompanied by all these devotees in whose association he performed his pastimes, Nartam Das simply weeps. Okay, so, yeah, according to, not my calculation, but according to uh, calculation, Vaishnav calculation, um, our BBT calendar says it's Vrindavan Das Thakur's <coughs> disappearance day. So what I'll do is I'll just read about, a little bit about him. So this is from... Samadhi's book, Gaudi Vaishnav, Samadhi's book, by Mahanidhi Swami. All right. In her childhood, Narayani Devi, niece of Srivas Pandit, became mad with love of God upon receiving the mercy of Sri Guranga Mahaprabhu. Later, she gave birth to Vrindavan Das, who was the last disciple of Sri Nityananda Prabhu. On his guru's order, he wrote Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. So, the Srivas Pandit seems like his brother, which, not sure what his name was, but had a daughter, niece, so the niece of Srivas Pandit, very uh, glorious family. So, that's Narayani Devi, and uh, she became mad with receiving the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then she gave birth to Vrindavan Das Thakur. Who, uh, yeah, last disciple of Nityananda Prabhu. <laughs> Qualified spiritual master, <laughs> Nityananda Prabhu. <laughs> it is practic practically a law among Vaishnav writers like Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Sanatan Goswami, Krishna Das Kaviraj, and Vrindavan Das Thakur to always keep themselves in the background. They never mention anything about their family lineage or personal history. The authors of the best written and the most relishable verses. <clears throat> collected in <clears throat> Rupa Goswami's Padyavali remain unknown. So, yeah, some of those shlokas are said. You, know, you read this wonderful shloka, and then, yeah, it says unknown author. Just During the 16th century, entire books of exceptional transcendental prose and poetry were penned by prideless Vaishnavas, preferring to remain anonymous. Feeling utmost humility, such Vaishnava writers express themselves only in relation to their preceptors. Krishna Das Kavaraj glorifies his gurus at the end of each chapter of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Sri Rupa Raghunatha Pade Yar Asha Chaitanya Charitamrita Kahai Krishna Das. Praying at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath always design their mercy. I, Krishna Das, narrate Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita fallen in their footsteps. Sri the Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami shows his supreme homage and gratitude by honoring Vrindavan Das Thakur with the, with the name Vyas. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita Antya 20, chapter 20, text 82, this is what uh, Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami says about Vrindavan Das Thakur. Vrindavan Das Thakur is Lord Nityananda's favorite devotee, and therefore he is the original Vyasa Dev in describing the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. As Sri the Vyasadeva told Sri Krishna's pastimes in Bhagavatam and other Puranas, Sri the Vrindavan Das Thakur described Chaitanya Leela and Chaitanya Bhagavat. The humble heart of Krishna Das Kavaraj pours out more praises of Vrindavan Das Thakur. That's another thing he says. Hearing Chaitanya Bhagavat destroys all misfortune. By reading Chaitanya Bhagavat, one will understand the glories of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda and he will attain the highest perfection of knowledge, pure love of Krishna. 
Since such a wonderful book could not be written by a human being, it seems that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself has spoken it through the mouth of Srila Vindavan Das Thakur. I offer millions of respectful obeisances to the lotus feet of Vrindavan Das Thakur. By compiling such a valuable book, he has delivered everyone from the cycle of birth and death. Such Chaitanya tried to meet to Ali, Ali Lila, chapter 8, text 33 through 42. At Mamagachi in Mududrumadweep, Navadweep, Vrindavan Das Thakur established deities of Nitagaranga and Sri Jagannath Dev. He lived there as a celibate and worshipped his beloved deities. Vrindavan Das Thakur had many disciples, including Gopinath Brahmachari, a descendant of Sri Keshva Bharati. And it says in Krishna's pastimes, Vrindavan Das Thakur is Vyasadeva. So yeah, such a wonderful. Uh, such a wonderful personality and he left he left a great uh, work great piece of literature um, most important piece of literature the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat which which Srila Prabhupada he chose to comment on uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita which is obviously very important as well um, but we have the commentary of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur of the Chaitanya Bhagavat. So it's a book that, yeah, that everybody should read, that all devotees should read. And um, also the Chaitanya Charitamrita, devotees should read that as soon as possible. <laughs> Actually, you should lock yourself in your rooms and just finish that book. And it might take a few days. You could lock yourself there for a few days or a few weeks, whatever. It's very important. Why is that? Because Chaitanya Bhagavad and Chaitanya Chaitamrita. I'll just, uh, before I continue. Om Ajnana Tevadandasya Gananjana Shalakaya Chukshula Bhavitam Yenata Smashi Gurave Namaha Mukham Karidavad Shalam Pangam Langa Itegadim Yakripata Maham Vandesha Gurun Diritanadam Vaan Chakavadu Vishya Kipasana Veva Chapadita Nam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namanamaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Bhavanita Nanda Shri Dvaita Gadada Shivasri Gold Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So why is it important to finish these books? Because, or read books about Lord Chaitanya? Because um, we're the Sankirtan movement, right? Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement. Prabhupada will sometimes say army, Sankirtan army. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as we all well know, he's the most uh, recent, yeah, Krishna come again, or Krishna coming again around 500 years ago so and he's teaching us how to be a how to be a devotee and how to reach the highest levels of Krishna consciousness and also yeah how to how to spread Krishna conscious how to be Krishna conscious and uh, Srila Prabhupada Vrindavan Das Thakur Krishna Das Kavaraj Goswami Srila Prabhupada Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur they really worked hard to give us these literatures and without reading those literatures, without hearing those literatures, there's a nice, um, there's a nice uh, audio recording by Damodar Das. There's many Damodar Dases, but one Damodar Das, he, in a nice audio recording of Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat. Very beautiful narration of it, a nice voice, so everybody could get that or listen to it in their free time when they're doing this, that, driving, whatever they're doing. Uh, and again, yeah, they really worked hard to give these literatures, and uh, they wanted to give them to us. It wasn't just like we we should take it. We should we should we should take personal responsibility to pay them back. Of course, you can't. We can't pay back the spiritual master, but we should feel that indebted to them that I need to pay these personalities back. That's personalism. And personalism means they wrote them for us, like in, not not just us as like some Kali Yuga, you know, humanoid, you know, random another face in the crowd. Means for us individually, personally, for us. It's personal, it's a personal relationship. We have personal relationship with Sri Prabhupada. We have a personal relationship with, yeah, 
um, we should feel connected to the disciple succession in that way. So part of serving them is to serve them by doing what they want. <laughs> and that is called humility. Humility means to do what the charyas want. That's humility. And one of the things they want is they want us to to relish the, the Chaitanya Charitamrita, relish the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavan. That's what they want. And you could almost say that they want that more than anything. <laughs> um, so it's important we do that. And when I say lock yourself in your rooms and finish Chaitanya Charitamrita, yeah, I mean, how I don't know how far you want to take that statement, but it's a statement that means we should try to finish, like uh, try to go through it, you know, absorb it. I, I remember some time um, I, I was reading the Prabhupada Lila Amrita. It's also an important book. Prabhupada. Satsrup Das Goswami has really put a lot into that book. Um, but he, but I was reading it and, and somehow during the, I, I had some, yeah, there's a day that was free, so I was reading, and I was reading, and I was reading, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to finish this <laughs> today. So I just sat there, and it was like early morning or afternoon time, something like that, and I just sat there and read, read, read all day long, all day long, till maybe 10 p.m. or something, and I finished it. So. so, yeah, we should try to do that. Sorry for giving myself an example, but it's very important um, that we take advantage <coughs> so, on this day of the disappearance of Radhavan Das Thakur, we could try to hear the Chaitanya Bhagavat, read the Chaitanya Bhagavat, or at least you could say make a vow that, okay, I will finish the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat in this lifetime. <laughs> I won't wait for my next lifetime. I'll finish it this lifetime. And uh, the sooner the better, because then we'll be more enlivened in Krishna consciousness. Sometimes people wonder, why aren't I enlivened? Or why aren't I enlivened in, in um, to the degree that I want to be? And one simple answer is that, well, we need to take more association, uh, good association, transcendental association. Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat, Vrindavan Das Thakur. Wonderful association, the greatest association and so many other books. So that's how we become more and more enlivened. So yeah, we could take a vow, we could uh, meditate, pray to Vrindavan Das Thakur to help us um, enter the, the, uh, the glories of the Sri Chaitanya Bhagavat and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All right, so that's a little bit about Vrindavan Das Thakur. And uh, now we'll read the Bhagavatam. Okay. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Okay. So this is Canto 4, Creation of the Fourth Order, Chapter 23. Maharaj Prithu is going back home. We're on text 30. Itam bhutanu bhavo sa Pritusa bhagavatamaha Kirtitam tasya charitam Udama charitasya te Itam bhutanu bhavo sa Pritu sa bhagavatamaha kirtitam tasya charitam uddhama charitasya te itam bhutanu bhavo sa pritu sa bhagavatamaha kirtitam tasya charitam Uddhama Charitasyate
Okay, word by word translation. Ittam Buddha. Thus. Anubhavaha. Very great. Powerful. Asau. That. Prituhu. King Prithu. Saha. He. Bhagavat Tamaha. The best among the lords. Kirtitam. Described. Tasya. His. Chaditam. Character. Uddhama, very great. Chaditasya, one who possesses such qualities. Te, to you. Translation. Maitreya continued, the great, greatest of all devotees, Maharaj Prithu, was very powerful, and his character was liberal, magnificent, and magnanimous. Thus, I have described him to you as far as possible. Purport. In this verse, the word Bhagavat Tamaha is very significant. For the word Bhagavat is used especially to re refer to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as the word Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is derived from the word Bhagavat. Sometimes, however, we see that the word Bhagavan is used for great personalities like Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and Narada Muni. This is the case with Prithu Maharaj, who is described here as the best of the Bhagav Bhagavans, or the best of the lords. As a person can be so addressed only if he's a great personality who exhibits extraordinary and uncommon features or one who attains the greatest goal after his disappearance or who knows the difference between knowledge and ignorance. In other words, the word Bhagavan should not be used for ordinary persons. Okay, I'll read one, one more. Ya idam samahat punyam shadaya vahita patet any person who describes the great characteristics of King Prithu with faith and determination, whatever he reads or hears of them himself, what, whether, excuse me, whether he reads or hears of them himself or helps others to hear of them, is certain to attain the very planet which Prithu Maharaj attained. In other words, such a person also returns home to the Vaikuntha planets, back to Godhead. Purport. In the execution of devotional service, Shavanam Kirtanam Vishnu is especially stressed. This means that Bhakti or devotional service begins by hearing and chanting about Vishnu. When we speak of Vishnu, we also refer to that which relates to Vishnu. In the Shiva Purana, Lord Shiva recommends Vishnu worship to be the topmost worship, and better than Vishnu worship is worship of the Vaishnava or anything that is related to Vishnu. The fact is explained herein that hearing and chanting about a Vaishnav is as good as hearing and chanting about Vishnu. For Maitreya has explained that anyone who hears about Prithu Maharaj with attention also attains the planet which Prithu Maharaj attained. There is no duality <coughs> between Vishnu and the Vaishnav, and this is called Advaya Gyan. A Vaishnav is as important as Vishnu, and therefore Sri Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur wrote in his Guru Ashtaka, the spiritual master is honored as much as the Supreme Lord because he is the most confidential servitor of the Lord. This is, this is acknowledged in all revealed scriptures and is followed by all authorities. Therefore, I offer my respectful obeisances under the lotus feet of my spiritual master who is a bona fide representative of Sri Hari. The Supreme Vaishnava is the spiritual master, and he is non-different from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is said that sometimes Lord Chaitanya used to chant the name of the gopis. Some of the Lord's students tried to advise him to chant the name of Krishna instead. But upon hearing this, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became very angry with his students. Controversy on this subject reached a point that after this incident, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu decided to take sannyas because he was not taken very seriously in his Grihastha Ashram. The point is that since Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chanted the names of the gopis, worship of the gopis or the devotees of the Lord is, is as good as devotional service rendered directly to the Lord. It is also stated by the Lord himself that devotional service to his devotees is better than service offered directly to him. Sometimes the Sahajiya class of devotees are interested only in Krishna's personal pastimes to the exclusion of the activities of the devotees. 
this type of devotee is not on a very high level. One who sees the devotee and the Lord on the same level has further progressed. Say it again. So once uh, Srila Prabhupada, uh, and it's in the, what's this book? Bori John Prabhu, My Glorious Master. It's also a great book. My Glorious Master. Uh, his accounts with Srila Prabhupada. Uh, so he, in that book, it's brought out that what happens to one they ask Sri the Prabhupada, what happens to one if they think of you at the time of, uh, of death? Do they go back to Godhead? And Sri the Prabhupada said, yes, they go back to the spiritual world. Uh, so, so there's this idea within Krishna consciousness, within Srimad Bhagavatam, within the Vedic literatures, as Sri the Prabhupada states in this purport that in the Shiva Purana, that's one case, that better than Vishnu worship is worship of those things in in uh, relation to Vishnu, right? Tadiya, those things in relation to Vishnu, and of course, one of the main things that are in relation to Vishnu is 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 Vaish are Vaishnavas, devotees of Vishnu, devotees of Krishna, and yeah, it says here that Prabhupada says here that. Um, Lord Shiva recommends Vishnu worship be the topmost worship. Better than Vishnu worship is the worship of Vaishnava or anything that is related to Vishnu. That fact is explained here in that hearing and chanting about Vaish a Vaishnava is as, is as good as hearing and chanting about Vishnu. <coughs> so, uh, and it's, uh, yeah, so a Vaishnava is as important as Vishnu. And therefore, Sri the Vishnu Chakvati Thakur wrote in his Guru Rashtra, Sakshadarita and Samasa Shastra. So Vaishnava is as important as Vishnu, or you could say a, a Vaishnava is as important as Krishna. Uh, so what does this mean practically? How does this, how does this, uh, what does this mean for us? That we should see devotees as uh, important, as as important, or yeah, as important as Vishnu or as Krishna. So in other words, how do we treat devotees? Are we treating them like Krishna? <laughs> or like we would Krishna? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, a lot of the, or at least sometimes we see that in Vaishnav dealings, I mean, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's not that one Vaishnav is treating them with, you know, affection and love and respect. Um, those, you could say, almost basic things. What to speak of treating them as as as, as Krishna? That's uh, yeah. I mean, you can imagine if if we're in, in the spiritual world, how devotees treat Krishna, or how in general how devotees relate to Krishna. It's very it's very special interaction. It's it's completely based on um, real yeah. You could say affection <coughs> for for each other. That relationship. So uh, if, we, if, we, if we just simply treat Krishna like that, then we're actually missing the, we're missing the, um, the point and we're actually not understanding the conclusion of the Vedic literatures. That we should treat Vaishnavas uh, just as we would Krishna, or at least, <laughs> at least with some basic respect and some basic, uh, yeah, basic respect. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is, and, and if you think, and if we think about it, I mean, the, the whole world is full of people, and, and, and who are all those people? I, I, they're all eternal servants of Krishna. And you could say, okay, they're not acting on that level, but they have Krishna within their heart, that's for sure. 
and what to speak of devotees who are actively engaging in Krishna consciousness. They have Krishna within their heart as well, and they're trying to surrender to Krishna. So someone may say, okay, well, they're not very advanced, so therefore I don't have to respect them. I don't have to respect them because they're not very advanced. Well, okay, they may not be very advanced. That may be true. But by disrespecting them, uh, the person who disrespects them doesn't get any credit for that. It's not that, oh, okay, well, they're not advanced. So by, by, by disrespecting them, it's, I'm going to get some bhakti points or something. It doesn't work like that. There's no indications like that, that, okay, if he's, ad if he's advanced, then he could treat him nice. Or if he's like, if he's Uttamadikari, okay. Madhimadikari, okay. But Kanishta, no, no way. Or in our perception, Kanishta, then I can't, I can't respect that person. It means materialistic devotee. Kanishta, materialistic devotee. Uttama Bhakta, the highest devotee. And Madhyama, one on the, on the, in the middle. Madhyama means middle. So they're not, they're advanced to a degree. Um, but it actually says that w within this pastime of, uh, what's this? Uh, Ambarish Maharaj, Ambarish Maharaj and Dravasa Muni. So Ambarish Maharaj was, uh, was attacked by Dravasa Muni. He was offended. We'll get into the details right now. I'm sure everybody knows. He was offended, uh, Dravasa. So he, he got part of his hair. He, he threw it on the, on the, on the ground. And uh, a demon or a demoness. I, I, I could have swore I read a demon, a demon, but anyways, what are you saying? Demoness? Whatever the case is. <laughs> this fierce personality was going to attack Ambrish Maharaj. And Ambrish Maharaj was just, okay, if that's what Krishna wants, I'll just, I'll, 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 I'll accept that. So then what happened is Vish, uh, Lord Vishnu's chakra came chasing after, uh, killed that demon, demoness, killed that fierce personality, and then started chasing Dravasa Muni, and he wasn't peaceful, he wasn't Shanti. He was running all over the universe. Eventually he ran to see Vishnu. He made it to there, a powerful yogi he was. And in that section, it, 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 it's glorifying the devotees and their relationship with Vishnu, that it's su such a close relationship. They're so close to each other. And specifically, in, in one of those verses, it says that it says that even devotees who are not, it mentions, I'm paraphrasing, but even devotees who are not on the most advanced level, because they're connected, because they are connected with someone who's dear to me, they are dear to me. So you could say that there's a dear devotee, namely a spiritual master, right? A bona fide, authentic spiritual master, authorized, right, advanced personality. And he is connected through the disciplic connection, connected to Krishna. I'm talking spiritual masters in general. So that person who is connected to that spiritual master through initiation and through following the, the, the principles, four regulative principles, and chanting 16 rounds, that person may not be super advanced. And a lot of the times that's the case. But because they are connected with that spiritual master, they are still dear to Krishna. That's what he's saying. They are still dear to me. So um, if that is the case, then we should be careful on, on our dealings with other Vaishnavas. What to speak of if they're advanced? If they're advanced, then yeah, they say they say the reaction is is way higher. Means uh, you get more blessings by serving, and you get you get more curses by by offending. But even you could say someone who's connected to the spiritual master is dear once again. So there is some reactions for that. There's reactions. It's not. I know we say it all the time, all the time, all the time, and sometimes, oh, I heard this before, there's reactions, there's reactions. But it's a real thing. It's not, it's not some like kind of um, imaginative, right? If we, if we think like that, we're actually offending the Vedic literatures, right? To consider the Vedic literatures imaginations. 
or the glories of the holy name imagination, which the Bhagavatam is glorification of Krishna. If we consider an imagination, it would be offensive. So it's real that there's reactions for um, uh, not treating Vaishnavas like we should. And that reaction is that we don't feel enlivened. Those reactions is it's very difficult to chant 16 rounds. It's not easy to chant 16 rounds. means it should be easy to chant 16 rounds. We should be like very easily, um, we sh that it should be a task or a, a, a service that we do that, that our concentration is just, the, the, our whole consciousness is just flowing towards the holy name means uh, completely focused. And, um, of course, there's other reasons why, you know, the ten offenses, why it may not be easy. But one of the reasons is because it's not, um, we're not dealing with the Vaishnavas properly. And that there, if you, um, if we let that continue, then what happens is, if it's difficult to change 16 rounds, eventually it becomes difficult to follow the regulative principles. That's the next stage. <laughs> and then, anyways, and then it's, and then a person's uh, lost. <clears throat> they disappear from the, first they disappear from the Bhagavatam class, and then they disappear from the ashram, and then, and then they disappear in the, into the corporate world, and then they disappear, you know, their Krishna consciousness disappears. And their ability to follow the regulative principles also disappears. So it's you know it's a serious thing. So therefore, saksha dhirita and samasa shastra that that uh, the spiritual master, which by the way, the spiritual master is not alone. He has a whole entourage, which means his followers, disciples, and so on, should be respected um, as a dear confidential servitor of the Lord, as much as the Lord, much as Krishna. Um, but we shouldn't just stop there. We should also try to see Vaishnavas in the right um, in the right light. Um, now, of course, that doesn't mean that okay. Well, we're all Vaishnavas, so so uh, great. You know, I've been waiting for this, right? This I've been waiting for everybody to realize this that that uh, I am as great as Vishnu. So therefore, I, I receive some special treatment. We shouldn't think like that, but we should see others like that. That's the idea. See others like that. And not expect much for ourselves. Because um, it never really, a lot of the times it doesn't work out anyway. So <laughs> People are expecting respect. It's just good luck. <laughs> Go out on book distribution, right? We'll see You know how... how, how uh, I mean, of course, some devotees, some people stop and take books and everything, but uh, there's a lot of no's, there's a lot of, right, people aren't recognizing. That's why it's good, actually, to go out. It's good, good to go out and distribute books, because then, you know, if there's some built-up, whatever it may be, some uh, pride or built-up, you know, self-importance or something, then you go out and Krishna will make some nice arrangements <laughs> for some nice treatment out there, um, which is good. And yeah, that's the thing. You know, nobody cares out there. Oh, you, you, are you a sannyasi? Nobody cares. Are you a, you know, are you a this? Are you a that? You're so, nobody cares about your position. Nobody cares about your learning. Nobody cares about anything. They're just, you're just some guy on the street, you know, trying to <laughs> give him some religious book. I mean, so it's good, actually. Um, so... So yeah, we should glorify the devotees, we should um, serve the devotees, we should be uh, sold out to trying to, to sold out to, to the idea of my life is meant for service, and my life is meant for service of, 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 of the Vaishnavas. <coughs> and we should take great responsibility for that, that this is my responsibility. Um, everybody should take responsibility for that. And devotees who, who do that, they become very dear to uh, Krishna and they become very dear to the whole Vaishnava community. 
um, like uh, I, I sometimes I ask I've asked a few devotees in Los Angeles I said I said who who's your favorite devotee <laughs> and I had a few uh, interesting I had a few people oh well, Brigapati Prabhu's he's very inspirational very yeah. um, but whoever it is Brigapati Prabhu or I was thinking about my poor Shashi he's the he's the one who uh, uh, takes care of all the book scores throughout the whole world, sends out the newsletter. Throughout the He's been doing that for so many years, I mean decades or something. But he's very quiet and, you know, yeah. But he's back in the background and doing his service, doing his service. Um, he is the he, treasurer, yeah, he's a treasurer. He's just doing his service year after year, decade after decade. So that's what's wanted, that, that somebody will just take a service take a res take responsibility for it and just you know plug into that and just give their give their life to that service and in this way um they'll become dear to krishna they'll become dear to vaishnavas and and yeah they should be uh, the devotees who do this are doing it in the in the mood of service to the vaishnavas i'm i'm serving the vaishnav community and um this is you could say one of the most important things that devotees need to that that everybody should um, learn how to function in such a way as become steady, become steady in one service, um, and that's how one makes advancement. The reason one one doesn't reach the goal is because because they give up. They, they there can't be. There's no steadiness. That's why they don't reach the goal. I mean, just like we think of a, if you think, like Prabhupada says, water wears away stone. Why is it doing that? <laughs> it's not that it drop, 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 drop on the stone, drop, 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 and then it kind of stops, right? Stops for 10 minutes, stops for two hours, stops for five years. No, it's a continuous drop, 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 drop. And that wears away stone because it's continuous. You're continuously pushing, uh, the, the water's continuously, yeah pressure of the water so the reason why um, one of the reasons is why someone doesn't reach the goal of Christian consciousness or feel like they're making progress or b is because the it, there's too much um, you know giving up giving up giving up failure failure giving up, giving up and not just continuous uh, pressure towards that goal <laughs> and failure is fine I mean it's not the best but <laughs> failure happens but but there can't. There's no ultimate failure in Christian consciousness, and one can't give up. If one gives up, then yeah, the game's over. But more or less, so one has to continue, and that steadiness is important. And that will be reached. That's what that's what the Bhagavatam says. It will be reached. Shinvatam sukata. This is what it is. Shinvatam sukata Krishna punya shavana kirtana. All these accumulated things within the heart are being removed, and all the 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 influences of rajas, tamas. Mode of ignorance, mode of passion goes away, right? The devotee becomes situated in goodness, and they they are gradually making progress, and they reach the steady platform, nishta, right? And then it's a lot easier to uh, continue, continue until we reach that final stage. Which I guess you never reach the final stage because it's always <laughs> it's always increasing. But um, anyways, all right, so. It's a little late now, so I guess we'll stop there. Does anybody have any uh, questions, comments? You have something? You were elaborating on the point of the dangers of Vaishnava Abharad, yeah. especially even that of a low devotee. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Could you explain how it's, I've heard like this, that it's better to fall from regulative principles than to offend Vaishnavas? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Juicy. Uh, okay, so he's saying, so, Dhamma Kumar, yeah, everybody heard the question. Um, 
this idea, okay, falling from regulative principles versus Vaishnava Parada. Um, one is sin, right? Due to weakness of heart, breaking the laws of God or breaking the laws of the scripture. Scripture says, do this, do this, do this, and people fell. So it's sinful, it's wrong. It's against, you know, it's against the regulative principles of laws of that Krishna set up. And then there's and then there's offense by uh, uh, aparad. Um, so one thing is that in relation to that, I was reading. I, I heard this thing Bhakti Tirtha Swami. He um, he compiled a book. I think it's a book on Vaishnava aparad. And he said that yeah, it is a book on Vaishnava aparad. He said that analyzing this word. Upa Rad. So Upa means without. And Radha, without Srimati Radharani. So without the protection of Srimati Radharani, that's what offenses do. And specifically, Vaishnava offenses do that. Because Srimati Radharani, she's the greatest devotee. And she has a lot of, I mean, <laughs> she has a lot of care and a lot of, right? Like Vijay Prabhu said yesterday in the morning or evening class, I'm not sure he said, she, uh, Prabhupada said one t in a purport that Shrimati Radharani is the, is the tender-hearted feminine counterpart of Krishna, more kind than Krishna. And therefore in Vrindavan, Prabhupada writes in the purport in Vijay Prabhu, saying that still devotees say, Jai Radhe, Jai Radhe, Jai, they understand we need Radharani's mercy. So we understand that, too. I mean, we're trying to understand that as well. Um, so, so committing the Vaishnava Parad, it... Uh, it means aparad without Srimati Radharani. Without Ra means Radharani's mercy. So without Radharani's mercy, I mean, big trouble, <laughs> big trouble. Because what that does is like, like Prabhupada quotes. He he gave one talk one time, and Juhu, my spiritual master, writes he was there, and my spiritual master was there, and he and Prabhupada spoke on this verse: Mahatmanas to mamparta daivim prakriti mashita. Daivi Prakriti Prabhupada said in this talk that it's referring to Srimati Radharani, the divine protection of Srimati Radharani, Srimati Radharani. The Mahatmas are under that protection. So what does that protection what what does that protection mean? Practically it means that it uh yeah, it protects us from Maya, from just being completely um what do you call? Like bulldozed. Bulldozed bulldozed by Maya, just completely run over by Maya. Which means our intelligence goes out the window, our senses, you know, go go out of control. Um, our desire to be Krishna conscious leaves, right? Just so many bad, un mis unfortunate things. Sometimes people go so far, they just, they'll talk bad about Krishna, they'll talk bad about Prabhupada. I mean, it go gets really ugly sometimes. So um, Vaishnava Parad, it, if not checked, it could definitely manifest into so many things like that, on just really bad situations. So, um, yeah, Aparad, Vaishnava Parad, without Shumatra Radharani, Radharani's mercy. And then there's sin, which is different. Aparad and sin are different. Now, of course, sin can come from Aparad, <laughs> but... There's a sin that comes just from weakness of heart, which means that people know the the um, what to do, but still, due to weakness of heart, they can't do it, and they commit sinful activity. But um, in many ways, uh, if those people are sincere and they're serious, then over time, they'll have the strength by Vaishnav Sangha and devotees' mercy Krishna's mercy to overcome that. Whereas sometimes in the case of these severe aparadis, people commit these aparads and <laughs> it's, it's actually a, a, a more unfortunate situation. So, um, so yeah, best not to do either. <laughs> best not to commit sinful activity or Vaishnava aparad. But um, in many cases, the persons who are just having trouble with their, um, you know, sinful desires, uh, over time they could become strong. 
Whereas, like, in other words, the Vaishnavas are those personalities that help us become strong in Krishna consciousness. So, so people who are sinful, if they're not offensive, they can take that association and benefit. Whereas people who are committing a vi people can Vaishnava Aparad, again, Vaishnava association is what makes us strong. But because they're committing Vaishnava Aparad, they, they, they can't properly benefit from Vaishnava association. And therefore, yeah, they just fall into sin completely. So, it's very dangerous, actually. Um, yeah. So, like Prabhupada quotes in one purport, I, I really have to memorize this purport, because it's a really short purport, very wonderful, in the Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada says something to the degree that um, if one... Um, it, one may not be able to completely follow the principles of Krishna consciousness, but as long as they do not resent the principle, eventually they will, uh, because of not resenting the principle, eventually they will be able to over, over you know, prolonged association. So that's the thing. You know, one may sh be struggling with sinful desires, but because they're not committing Vaishnava of Bharad, or they're not letting it get out of control, and in, in they're engaging sincerely in Krishna consciousness, they'll be able to overcome their problems. So, yeah. But there's many, um, you know, like Bhaktivinoda Thakur has a book about Vaishnava Aparad, for example. Um, this devotee Madhava Nanda, he put, he put together some of those uh, magazines he puts together. What are they called? Krishna Katamrita or something. He has something about Vaishnava Aparad there. Bhakti Tirtha Swami has a nice book about about Vaishnava Parad. So, yeah, Hati Mata, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Mad Elephant, you know, comes in and destroys the, the delicate creeper of devotion. I mean, even, even if it's not a delicate creeper, I mean, <laughs> elephant could really charge through a lot. So, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mukundacharya got some books, little mini books, how to overcome Vaishnava Parad, written by some. I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, there was this. There's this. Just a very short thing in that Bhakti Tirtha Swami book, but. He was. He gave this story, a, a true story, of this vi of a of a very advanced speaker of the Bhagavatam, and he was one day speaking, and there was this woman in the audience, and she was chanting. And then he said, "Hey, you know, hey, why are you chanting? You know, during my talk, and you know, what's your problem?" And she said, "Oh, pl I'm sorry, and please forgive me, and I can't control my tongue from not chanting." You know, it just keeps on chanting. You know, I, I can't control. I can't get it to stop. So then he continues with his talk, and she keeps on doing that. And he, he's super severe and offensive with her, and you know, says something, and she. There's this whole thing. She he commits this offense towards this, and she was a very advanced devotee, actually. Well, this is a book from Bhakti Tirtha Swami. Yeah, it's some Vaish. Well, no, no, this is some Vaishnav story in the past. Sorry, he's quoting some. Histor right, historical Vaishnav. Well, it's that this personality. Sh I, I could show you, but yeah, she was a personality of the past. Um, anyways, I could show you the name. I'm forgetting the name right now, but and um, I think her name's Krishna Takarani or something. So, I'll talk, yeah. So then what happened is uh, this person who committed this offense, he like <laughs> really fell into some strange conceptions. You know, my, he became like a really heavy speculator. And then he came up with this idea that actually you don't have to chant anymore. You could just, uh, in your mind, all this stuff. means you don't have to chant your rounds and all, all these kind of interesting uh, things he came up with. And then eventually it said that he... Uh, he left his body and he became a ghost. <laughs> and in that ghost body, it said he would uh, haunt Vaishnavas. 
Anyways, I'm not sure if there was a happy ending. I'll look into that. I'll get back to you. Maybe for, I'll get back to you about that. But anyways, so. Uh, I don't know if there's a happier note we could end on, but uh, how about anyways, Vrindavan Das Thakur Ki Jai, Sri Chaitanya Bhagavad Ki Jai. Vaishnava Parad, not Ki Jai.